All right, so let us now start talking about Vesper theory, so valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, hopefully this is a little more familiar um, than the last topic, but, right, so Vesper theory predicts the geometry of covalently bound molecules by considering the optimum geometry separation between groups of bonding and non-bonding electrons around the atom. So in general, right, electron pairs want to be as far away from one another as possible. And the basic three rules to this are the pairs of electrons in the valence shell want to repel each other, right? Unshared pairs of electrons, i.e. lone pairs, repel each other more than shared pairs, that is covalent bonds, and double and triple bonds are treated as one shared pair of electrons when uh, considering its uh, geometry. So let's look at uh, methane, like we did so long ago, uh, beginning of the chapter. So when we look at methane, we draw out the Lewis structure like we did before. We had it drawn like this, right? Four valence electrons, four bonds. But this is not the best way to draw it, right? Because the way we have it shown is that there is a 90 degree angle here. But that's not really true. Right, for an sp3 hybridized atom, a 90 degree angle does not work in 3D space. Right, So uh, not correct in 3D spatial terms. So the best way to draw it and to consider it is like this. And what I've done here is, A, I have made the separation between these two hydrogens larger. So now it is 109.5 degrees, which is typical for an sp3 hybridized atom. And what we see here, right, with this wedge bond here and this dash bond here, are indications of its 3D spatial geometry. So what I've done is, with a wedge bond, is um, a wedge bond means that it is coming toward you, coming out of the plane, and a dash bond oops, a dash bond means it's going away from you. And normal bond, quote unquote normal bond, is just in the plane of the paper, or in my case, an iPad. So what this means is, right, is this wedge bond is coming out towards you, and this dash bond is pointing away from you. But there is still 109.5 degrees between each of these bonds, right? It's still 109.5 degrees. Um, it is just the best way to view it spatially. So, you know, in the 3D case, the bonds wouldn't be 90 degrees apart. They would be as far apart as possible, which in the case here is 109.5 degrees. And so this carbon, as discussed previously, is sp3 hybridized, right? There's three atoms it's attached to, no one pairs. So it has uh, four hybridized orbitals, so sp3. Um, So all its 2s and 2p orbitals have mixed. Um, and it has a tetrahedral geometry. And hopefully that is a little familiar to you guys. Um, and so this sort of 3D spatial geometry will be more important later on. Um, we'll be concerned with it much more um, in the later chapters. But um, with things like this, like the spatial geometry, um, it's, it's easy to get confused by, and it is a little tricky. So this is definitely where these 3D models start coming in handy, right? So this, if you were to draw, if you were to you know, put together your 3D model kit um, and draw out this methane molecule, you would, I think, be able to pretty easily see this 109.5 degrees 
um, and how spatially this makes a lot of sense. So in regards to uh, other Vesper geometries, you know, there's a lot of them. And in general chemistry one, you know, you look at a lot of different ones and more than just the ones concerning just S and P orbitals, you look at things regarding D orbitals and you have things like octahedral geometry. But here we are not too concerned with that because we are, again, simply looking for the most part at the second row of the periodic table and there are only S and P orbitals in those second row elements, right? So we're only really looking at SP hybridized orbitals. Um, so SP3, SP2, and SP. Um, what's important to note here too is, and these are just kind of general um, different configurations of things um, and how they come together. So looking at each one, right, with methane, we just did it. There's four bond sites to this the central uh, atom here, right, carbon, because of four valence electrons. Hibernation is to be three, no lone pairs, to geometry is centrohedral, and the bond angle is 109.5 degrees. When we start looking at other sp3 hybridized atoms, right, so if we look at uh, nitrogen, for example, um, we see that it has a lone pair. It's still sp3 hybridized, right, because it's attached to one, two, three atoms. It has one unshared pair of electrons, so that's four things. So there's four hybridized orbitals. Um, but in this case, it's one lone pair. And so the geometry now is trigonal pyramidal, or just pyramidal. And the bond angle is a little less than 109.5 degrees, right? Because as uh, we previously mentioned in our general rules, the lone pair is uh, repulsing the shared pair of electrons of more. So these are actually pushed down a little bit more. Um, if you said this was 109.5 degrees, um, it wouldn't, you know, really be all that wrong, but technically it is a little less than 109.5 degrees. And the same for this example here with oxygen, um, where oxygen has two lone pairs, is bonded to two things, so it's SP3 hybridized, um, it has a bent geometry, right, um, and the bond angle is even less now because it has two lone pairs instead of just one, which are really repulsing these um, shared pair of electrons. And we can look at some other examples too, where we have uh, sp2 hybridized atoms. So in the case of uh, this molecule here, this carbon is bonded to one, two, three things. So it is sp2 hybridized. In this case, it is trigonal planar with a bonding of 120 degrees. Um, in this case, you know, we're not really using wedge or dash bonds because there's nothing really here to illustrate in 3D space because um, it is perfectly fine being quote unquote flat like this, right? And so we're looking at another example with this nitrogen here as a lone pair, bonded to two things, sp2 hybridized, one lone pair, the geometry here is bent, and it's a little less than 170 degrees uh, for the bond angle here, because again, that lone pair is repulsing um, these shared electrons a little bit more. And last example, we have carbon triple bonded to one thing and just a sig bond on the other side, so it is sp hybridized, because it's only bonded to two things, and of course, probably not surprise anybody, it is linear and it has a bonding of 180 degrees, right? And again, there's no real 3D spatial features to really worry about. Um, so hopefully this is a pretty uh, consolidated list for you all to kind of go back to and check as you're kind of doing more of these hybridization problems. This in general is a pretty good uh, concise list of what these different geometries are going to be. So let's take a look at um, an exception to this rule, right, of, of uh, hybridization. So, um, actually, I'll let's skip the slide. Whoops, sorry. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at some examples of geometry and hybridization um, in central atoms. So in the case of... Uh, so in the case of water, I'm not going to draw on the lobes, just have it like this. All right, so water is bond, bonded to two things, and it has two unshared pair of electrons. So it is it's four hybridized orbitals. So it is sp3 hybridized. 
Um, and because, uh, again, of the things we've discussed, it has a bent geometry. And we can say that the bond angle here is less than 109, oops, less than 109.5 degrees. Um, and the way that you can remember uh, 109.5 degrees um, so you can think about like a radio station. You know, 109.5 all hits all the time. It's a good way to recall, despite it being a little cheesy, um, that angle for sp3 atoms. So we'll next we'll, we'll look at a different example, boron. So um, with boron, right, I discussed it a little bit earlier, but it only has three valence electrons. So it's only going to be able to form three bonds as is. So uh, when we look at it, the Lewis structure of it, right? So it is bonded to one, one, two, three, three things. Um, and so it is sp2 hybridized. And so sp2 hybridized. Um, and from the things we've discussed, right, it is trigonal planar. Right, it's kind of in the name three things try, and it is kind of flat. Planar, no 3D things to worry about here. Um, in general, boron is sort of an oddball here on the second row. Um, it is trivalent, um, and it can't really come have a complete octet without being charged. Um, as kind of drawn here, this uh, uh, BH3 is not very stable um, at standard you know, uh, temperature and pressure. So for it to be in a sort of octet-filled noble gas configuration, it needs to have another bond to it um, from its uh, empty p orbital um, in order for it to get that noble gas configuration and be satisfied. Oh, and of course, 120 degree angle. So let's take a look at another example. So in this case, we have another carbon molecule, another organic molecule. Um, and so in this case, drawing out all the atoms, we will be obeying 3D spatial features. So we can see each carbon atom here is you know, the same, bonded to three things, or four things rather including uh, its carbon partner. So each carbon bonded to four things. So it is uh, sp3 hybridized. And there is, of course, a 109.5 degree angle between each of the bonds. So that's the hydrogen, the hydrogen bond to the carbon bond, um, the hydrogen bond to the hydrogen bond, and the same on the other side. Um, and again, we're using wedges and dashes to illustrate that there is 3D geometry that must be adhered to in order to get that 109.5 degree angle. So, and for our last example, we'll look at another carbon-carbon molecule. You notice there's two less electrons, or sorry, two less hydrogens than the other example. So what that means for us drawing this is that it must have a double bond. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is in a different video. Um, but each of these carbons are bonded to three things, has no lone pairs, so it is sp2 hybridized. Um, and the bond angles here, um, they are a little different. Um, it's not exactly 120 degrees for these, um, but for all intents and purposes, we will say it is, you know, this is 120 degrees. It is trigonal planar for these central atoms. Um, and in the case over here, I forgot to mention, this is tetrahedral, of course. Um, so, uh, something we can do too, because I have it drawn flat here, which is fine, like it is to quote unquote planar. Um, we could draw it a slightly different way just to sort of show you another example of using wedges and dashes. You can draw it like this, where the hydrogens are coming away with the dashes and towards you with the wedges. 
but it's still you know trigonal planar, still sp2 hybridized, still about 120 degree angles um, between each of the bonds. Uh, but we're just kind of drawn it a different way. It's more, um, it's kind of flat. You can sort of imagine if each of these hydrogens are pointed towards you, it's almost like you're looking straight down a sheet of paper, right? Kind of like so. Um, you're just kind of looking straight down flat at a sheet of paper, rather than kind of looking at it head on, like this. So hopefully that makes sense. So thinking about an exception to the rule of um, this hybridization, let's look at uh, acetamide here. So drawing it out, I'm kind of shorthanding the hydrogens bonded to the carbon there, because they're not super important for this example. Um, what you might want to do is, right, considering the 3D geometry of sp3 hybridized atoms, like this nitrogen here, right, because it's bonded to one, two, sorry, it's bonded to one, two, three things, right, as a lone pair, so it is sp3 hybridized, you would think. Um, so looking at the carbon next to it, its neighbor, it is sp2 hybridized, right, bonded to three things, no lone pairs. Um, based on the rules, we would think that this nitrogen would be sp3 hybridized, but it's not. Um, if an atom has one or more lone pairs, which the nitrogen does, and is attached to an sp2 atom, which it is, then the atom in question is also sp2 hybridized. So we'll talk a little bit more about why this is um, in a later chapter, but essentially it kind of comes from resonance, right? And if you remember from Gen Chem 1, um, we have our hybrid resonance structure here, drawn like so. The lone pair is, is donating into this uh, carbon-nitrogen bond, and you're getting a flow of electrons through this system, right? So, and now you can see it here, right? If this was, if this nitrogen was double bonded to this carbon, it would then be trigonal planar. And that's kind of what's happening. Because the lone pair is donating into the system, there is this sort of resonance going on that's making the nitrogen um, have a lot more sp2 character. So it is, by all considerations, um, this is sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about why this is when we start talking about resonance a little bit more, um, but I kind of wanted to throw this to you now so you kind of were prepared for it a little later on. So hopefully that makes uh, some sense now and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense in a little bit.